Good morning, everyone. Boker Tov. This week's Torah portion begins the story of Abraham and Sarah, when God says, Lech Lecha, go to the land that I will show you. And God promises the land of Israel to Abraham and Sarah's descendants, the Jewish nation. And then, in a famous verse, God says to Abraham, look up at the heavens. And God says, your offspring, your children, will be like the stars in the heaven. And the question is, in what way are the Jewish people compared to the stars in the heaven? And there are many different answers and many analogies. But I would like to share one that I feel specifically resonates this year more than any other year. You see, when you look up at night at the star, it looks tiny, it looks small, it looks infinitesimal. It's just this little dot of light in the sky. But we all know that all the stars each one of them is larger than planet Earth and that many of the stars have actually more light than the Sun itself. Which means to say that the Jewish people, every Jew, is like a star in the heaven. Sometimes you look at a person and you just see a little dot of light. You may think they have a small light, they're insignificant, they're minor. But the truth is, God is telling Abraham, look up at the stars. Every single Jew is like a star in the heaven. Maybe from a distance, you don't recognize their full light and luminescence. You don't appreciate their size and magnitude. But if you come closer, if you get to know that person, you will uncover and reveal the depths of their soul, which contains so much power, so much light, so much beauty and so much strength. And I believe that this year, more than ever, as we've lost so many countless beautiful souls from the Jewish people since October 7th, we hear story after story after story of courage, of heroism, of selflessness, of sacrifice, of devotion. And before these heroes gave their lives, you would have met them on the street or encountered them in the supermarket and you would just think they're ordinary people. And suddenly you discover that these were great lights, giants, stars with more light than the sun itself. And it reminds us to never overlook someone's light, someone's greatness. Everyone possesses it, you just have to discover it. And if you don't see it, it's because you're not close enough. Just come closer to that fellow Jew and you will discover their light. And a most recent example of this, uh, tragically, was last week. In Jerusalem, there's a rabbi who actually teaches in a very famous high school in Israel called the Himmel Farb High School. They've already lost nine of their students, uh, alumni and staff members since October 7th. And there's a rabbi there by the name of Rabbi Avi Goldberg, 43 years old. He and his wife Rachel were talented musicians. She's a violinist, he's a clarinet player. And this rabbi had so much light, so much joy. Everyone who knew him said, that a brief encounter with him would lift their spirits. He was known in the community for his singing, for his leading prayers, for his teaching Torah, for his acts of service and volunteerism throughout the community. He was so beloved. He and his wife were simply known as Avi and Rachel. They were an inseparable unit. And they would invite people into their home for communal kumzitzes, where Avi would play the clarinet and Rachel will play the violin and there are videos of the whole community singing in their home. It was a home filled with love of God, love of Hashem, love of the Jewish people, love of Torah, love of one another. At 43 years old, he was called up as a reservist. He served 250 days this year and he was in Lebanon last week and tragically he fell in battle. And the whole community, his eight children, his wife, his community, his school, they're all in deep mourning over the loss of this beautiful, beautiful, radiant, loving, kind human being. And the stories that are being told about him are remarkable. For example, every Yom Kippur, with the blessing of his wife Rachel, he would go to a kibbutz, a secular kibbutz, to lead the services for the kibbutz members. And this year, he was in Lebanon. So he asked his son if his son can go for him, his grown son, to lead the services in the secular kibbutz. That was his love, that was his devotion, that crossed all 
barriers to all Jews' unconditional love. As the family laid him to rest, tragically, you see the eight children mourning, saying Kaddish together, the most heartbreaking scene. And then the family sat down for Shiva. And his wife, Rachel, sent out a message. And in Israel, as you know, thousands and thousands of people come to pay Shiva condolences because they recognize this person died for the Jewish people and therefore the entire Jewish nation shows up to console the family. And so she sent out a message that she welcomes politicians to come to console, to have a Shiva visit with the family, but on one condition. The condition is that if they're going to come, they have to come with someone from across the aisle. They have to bring a politician, not just from their coalition, but from the opposition party. That's the only way they should come. And just recently there was a picture of seven members of Knesset from various parties who showed up together to console Rachel and her children. This woman shows us what it means to be a unifier, that in the midst of her depth of her, this, her tragedy, of her grief, of her sorrow, she says, let's even use this tragedy to do what my husband did throughout his lifetime, brought Jews together, showed love for one another. Let's continue unifying the Jewish people. That is our strength to overcome the, the, the hardships and the tragedies that we're facing every day in Israel. This is the beautiful light of the Jewish people. Every hero has a story and makes us realize that the truth is every person, every Jew is a hero. We just have to come closer and uncover all their light. Yes, God told Abraham 3,700 years ago, your children are like the stars in heaven. Have a wonderful day.